Welcome back, everyone. We are here today with our first Mindset and Motivation Monday of the new year. I'm excited to be here with you. Love being able to start not only the week, but the year with this Mindset and Motivation Monday topic, which, in my opinion, can really revolutionize the way that you look at your goals for this new year. Now, I'm titling the show Dramatically Improve Your Life using this 100-hour rule. And what I want to share with you is this is that sometimes I think one of the reasons we're not as successful with our New Year's resolutions or our ability to even fathom what we can do and what we can accomplish is we look so far out as to what the goal is that we want to achieve that it can seem so big and so overwhelming. So a lot of times, well, we do one of two things. One is we set the goal but we realize that we're so far away that there's this chasm between where we are right now and where we need to be that it basically looks insurmountable. So even though we're maybe a little optimistic that we can't achieve it with the slightest obstacle, we just say, yeah, see, this is what happened. I'm not able to achieve it. I wasn't ever able to achieve it. I don't know why I thought I could do it this time, right? So it's kind of you're setting yourself up for failure. It's self-sabotage, knowing that there's going to be obstacles along the way. And kind of the second part to that is that sometimes... We underestimate what we could actually achieve because, again, we're looking at, oh, this is going to take so much work. And you know what? I don't have the time to be able to do it. I don't have this 100 hours that you're talking about here on the podcast, right? So I get it. I understand. What I want to do is I really want to simplify this. I look at it uh, more and more through the eyes, of course, as a practitioner, a clinician that has a practice that's fortunate enough to be able to see, you know, oversee for team-wise about 20,000 appointments a year, continuing year after year. And what I want to share with you is this. And it, it, this is not. Uh, this is something that goes back many, many thousands of years, and, and certainly I, I've learned it. Yes, a lot from Ayurveda, but also from the traditional naturopaths, and I've learned it from great philosophers. It's this: is that we overestimate that what we can do in the short term, and underestimate that of which we can do in the long term. What does that mean? Well, we overestimate what we can do in the next day or two days or week, myself included. If you look at my to-do list, and that's why I've switched, I have a podcast called Throw Away Your To-Do List. We'll link that up today if you'd like. But I stopped using to-do lists because I, I wrote down like 10 things that I needed to do in the day. Okay, well, I have a family. I have a full-time job. I'm running three different health-based wellness practices, and I can't do 10 extra things in a day and try to do my own workout, right? So like, that was ridiculous. So now, I no longer have to-do lists. And again, I'll link up that podcast. Today's episode is stephencabral.com forward slash 2523 if you want to see the takeaways for today, as well as the previous podcast I'll link to. So you know, that's, that's the first is that we just overestimate what we can do this week, right? Tomorrow, this week, even over the next maybe month. But we underestimate what we can do in a year. And this is what today's show is really all about. So I'm going to teach you the 100-hour rule. Um, I've learned it before in the past. But I was, uh, again, this is why sometimes social media can actually be helpful. Because I, I, I use it for more like interest, motivation, uh, those types of things. And I'm, I'm in and out with social media. I love answering people's comments. Um, I love being able to post. And uh, and I love checking on a few things and then I'm gone. You know, like 10 minutes, that's about it. And and again, you can do whatever works for you. And I know a lot of people, their businesses run on social media. Um, I just choose not to be there a lot of the time. It eats away at my 100 hours, right? So that's what I'm looking at. It. So, you know, I'm going to get to that in a moment, but it was a post actually that Jesse Eitzler uh, put up and he's a pretty motivating guy. So you can certainly check out his account. But um, I'm going to give you a different look on it as well. I just want, before we get into that, I want you to realize this is that I think that oftentimes too is that if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, you say like, oh, I can do it next year, right? I can do it next month. I can do it. You keep putting it off. I'm here to tell you that it's, it's not that way. I mean, the years fly by. Yes, I'm still in my 40s, but I look at life a little bit differently. And that, a lot of that comes from me being a sick kid. And as a sick kid, you grow up a little faster. Like at 17, I got that sick, shuffled around from doctor to doctor, given no hope of actually recovery. So you get old, you get older a little faster. That's just the way that it is. You start to look at life maybe a little bit differently. But what I can share with you is this, is next year is next year. Like we, we don't even know what that's going to bring. I would say this, if you have a goal, if you have a vision for your life, don't wait until next year, right? Don't wait another six months. Begin it now. You don't need to totally blow up your entire life in order to be able to work towards your goals. 
But it is time. The time is now. It really is. The time is forever now. We always think there's going to be a better time. There's not a better time to start a wellness program, to improve your relationships, to work on your body, overall body transformation. There's not a better time to work on your spirituality, right? There's not a better time to work on your career, your finances, whatever it might be. It's not because you don't know what the future is going to bring. And you need to be able to roll, as they say, with those punches. You need to be able to adapt. You need some level of flexibility. But you also need to get started. You don't even know what the future will bring, and you can't even imagine what that next level of success in any area of your life is going to be unless you start to move forward on the path. Because as you move forward on the path, well, you begin to see further down the road. You have more clarity. But you don't get to see further down the road until you actually begin to walk that path. So my first and highest recommendation is just to get started, even if it's an imperfect path. Even if you're struggling along the way, trust me, the struggle actually leads to some of the best memories you'll have. And I know that doesn't make any sense when you're already struggling. But I can tell you this, when you're struggling, you know that you're living life. As strange as that sounds, that you are pushing against a challenge. And if you're working towards a worthy goal, again, if the goal is worthy, you know that your life is not being wasted. You're actually working towards something. Maybe you'll achieve it. Maybe you won't, but you're working towards it. And that gives life meaning in and of itself. It is, it's a strange way to look at life, but struggle is not always necessarily bad as long as you know that there's another side. And so that's why you have to believe. I've talked about this before on many previous podcasts. Begin to set, um, suspend disbelief. Just don't believe that you can't achieve it, right? Believe that it is possible. Work towards it. I'm telling you right now, that is going to motivate you every morning to wake up and do the work that is needed in order to achieve the goal. I love visualization. I love the daydreaming. I love the journaling. But as that is done, once that is complete, you begin to move those feet, right? You begin to move forward doing the work that will allow you to get the goal as to what you want to achieve. So part of that is with this 100-hour rule. Now, it's very simple. All you want to do is put 100 hours over the course of one year towards one single objective that you need to achieve. It needs to be a strong why. And here's why. You're going to be doing this every single day. Now, of course, it's not 100 hours every day, right? That wouldn't work. But what do we do? We set a goal. All right, so let's think about this. You want a new career. All right, well, maybe you need to get some online education. Maybe you need to do a, a certification, like becoming a health coach, right? So you get a health coaching certification. Okay, you can do that in 100 hours. What about transforming your body? Yeah, you could absolutely do that in 100 hours. What about um, starting a new uh, business by creating a website, creating a social media content, getting out there with people? Sure, you could do that. Uh, what about uh, losing weight? Okay, that's going to be allocated into those particular things as well. What about um, working in your relationships? Yes, absolutely. Like all of these things can be done within 100 hours. But now we have to allocate, like where's this 100 hours coming from? Here's the thing. And Jesse Eitzler put it like this. He said 18 minutes a day. Technically, it's 17 minutes a day, but, but I like the mindset, and 18 is probably a little nicer number than 17. But thinking about this, let's just say 17, 18 minutes per day. That's it. So you might say, well, what can I do in 17 or 18 minutes per day that one, when done every day, not some days, but every day, adds up to 100 hours? And why does 100 hours matter? Here's why. When 100 hours is going to make you an expert, not in the entire world, but an expert compared to 99 out of 100 other people. Here's what I mean. So if you take, let's just round it up. You can say 18 minutes, 20 minutes a day, right? Let's just say someone to you, somewhere between 17 and 20 minutes a day. That's it. But that's all that you're thinking. My mind is like, I can't do 17-minute blocks in my calendar. I can do 20-minute blocks. Okay, that's easy, right? And so, or 15-minute and get another minute on each end of it. That's all. But like, that's how my brain works. So let me think of this. Okay, what can I do? Well, I could certainly read every single day on a topic I want to improve, spirituality, right? I want to improve, let's say, relationships. I want to improve body transformation, improve health, improve career, whatever it might be. Okay, I could do 17 minutes a day, no doubt about that. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to allow me to read about a book a month. Okay, I get to read a book a month on a topic. You're telling me 
that over the course of 12 months, if you read 12 books on just low thyroid, 12 months on autoimmune, 12 months on weight loss, 12 months on your career, your new career path, 12 months on finance, investing, relationships. You're telling me in 12 months, after reading 12 books, you won't have learned something? Of course you will. And very few people have ever read 12 books on one topic. Very few, if any. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I've said this before, most doctors do not read a single health-based book over the course of an entire year. And I know that that's going to blow your mind, but you can ask your doctor, like, hey, like, what, what books have you read this year that you could recommend? You could say it in a nice way. I am guaranteeing you, guaranteeing you that 99 out of 100 won't. You know why? Because they're busy. Because life gets in the way. They've got a job. They've got a family. They've got all the things that everybody else has. But if you ask them, if you had to, could you carve out 10 minutes upon waking and 10 minutes before bed? Everybody can. Honestly, everybody can. Because you just set the alarm 10 minutes earlier and you go to bed 10 minutes later. Like if that's what you have to do, you get 20 minutes in a day. And that's going to allow you, no doubt about it, whether you're studying for a certification, doing the work, reading books, whatever it is, you're going to have the knowledge. Okay, so I've said this before. You can gather the knowledge. And then what you need to do is you've learned what you now need to do. Online course, books, audio, whatever it is. But now it's your job to take action, right? So you've learned what you need to do. If you read a bunch of books, they're all going to say, like, what are the main themes? Okay, these are what all the people are saying. They're basically all saying this. I should probably do this, right? These are the experts. They're saying, they're all saying to do these things. Some are saying this, some are saying this, but they're all saying this. Let me do the thing or things that they're all saying that I need to do. Kind of these are the things that all run together. Great, I'm going to do those. And you begin to do those. And in 20 minutes a day, could you do a workout? Absolutely. 20 minutes a day, could you meal prep? Absolutely. Like, so then you're going to, once you get the knowledge... And you begin to believe, well, this is what they're saying. Everybody's saying this. I should do it, right? Then you do the things, and then you get to your goal. So the 100 hours a year, honestly, at 20 minutes a day is very doable. The problem is that most people are just never going to do it because it is the getting started part that's oftentimes the most challenging. So what I say at this part is this. Take your mind out of the equation. I say this so often. I do it for myself as well. I tell myself all the time, like, uh, I use a quote by Ronnie Coleman. Most people will never, <laughs> will have no idea. They'll have no idea what I'm talking about. But Ronnie, Col Ronnie Coleman was the uh, most decorated Mr. Olympia uh, bodybuilder. And, I mean, just an absolute uh, just monster of an individual and pushed their body to uh, limits that were previously and probably to this day unheard of. But here's the thing. He had just had a famous quote. He would get ready for a set, and the weights that he lifted, now it's eventually, it's crippled his body, which is not a good thing, of course, in the long term. And I talk about that. Don't wear out your body, right? But he accomplished something that only, you know, he could do. Like, that was him. But here's the thing. He would, ha he would have to lift incredible weights, and it'd be incredible strain on his body. It wasn't easy. But he went into it just saying this, ain't nothing to it but to do it, right? And so it's like, listen, like, it's there in front of you. You either get to do it or you don't. So you might as well get started, I mean, 17 minutes is going to pass in a blink. So you just, you just get started. So then what do you need to do? Well, you just set a timer. Like, that's it. You just literally have a timer on your phone set for 17 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever you want it to be. And then you're going to schedule it into your day each day. It could be two 10-minute blocks. I don't suggest four five-minute blocks. I suggest just two 10-minute blocks or two um, nine-minute blocks. That's it. And that's all that you need to do. And then you need to focus on one thing. Because I know that we all want to accomplish a million things. I get it. But let's make sure one of them gets done. Let's make sure the most important one gets done this year. And it may not take a year. It just may take six months or three months. But let's dedicate that time. So this is how I like people to do it in my practice. I just say, let's, let, we're going to pick one goal. And of course, in my practice, it's typically health or body transformation or some type of anti-aging you know, based protocol. Oh, great. Then what are we going to do? We're going to do it every day. And like every day, that seems like a lot. Yeah, it is. But in, you're never out of practice. Because the problem is, when some people start and stop, it's hard to get started again. So if you just get started, which is the hard part, don't stop. So you might say, well, working out every single day is too much. It's really not. Because you don't have to weight train every day. 
right? So it could be a 20 minute specific walk. It could be 20 minute cardio. The next day it could be 20 minute weight training. Then it could be walk, then cardio. It could just be cardio, weight training, cardio, weight training. And it doesn't these sprints. You can just literally get on an exercise bike or go for a jog for 20 minutes. Like we're not talking about, you know, debilitating work here. We're talking about putting in the reps. And over the course of the year, you put in 100 hours, maybe more. Maybe you enjoy the time. Maybe you bump it from 17 minutes to 30 minutes. I don't know. That's, that's up to you, of course. It's just how quickly do you want to accelerate those results? But start with 17 or 18 minutes, right? Start there. Start with something and do it every day. So then pick a time during the day that you can do it every day right? Pick a time. If you have a family, what's this going to be? I just, again, I'm someone, I have a family. So it has to be before everybody wakes up or it has to be after my two daughters are in bed. That's the time that I know it's guaranteed. So what do I do? First thing in the morning, it's guaranteed. I know that I can do it. I like, it's just, that's the way that it's going to happen. So pick a goal, do it every day, and then pick a time to do it at the same time every day. And some days will be good and some days won't. Like I've had great writing sessions. I've had great reading sessions. I've had great workouts and I've had not great writing sessions, not great reading. I sat down to write a Sunday email just last week and I was like, this is not good. Like this is not a good email. And so I didn't send it because I'm not going to waste the time of my email newsletter community with an email that isn't my best, but I wrote it. Like I wrote it and it just wasn't good. So I said, I'm not sending it. Like that's the way that is, but I did the work right? I put in the reps. And that's just what I recommend for you as well, because it matters because you're also conditioning your mind that you are a goal achiever, not a goal setter. Goal setters are great, but oftentimes they're very frustrated. So be someone that sets a big goal and then just uses the 12 week gear, which I'll link up on this podcast as well to begin to execute. So choose whatever you want. Choose a, a, a hobby, a sport, relationship, body transformation, health-based goal, career goal, investing goal, spirituality goal, whatever it is, set one, dedicate 20 minutes a day or two 10-minute blocks and just say to yourself, this is going to be the year, this is my time, I'm going to make it happen. Hopefully today's show was helpful. Thank you, as always, for tuning into these Mindset and Motivation Mondays. I appreciate you. For all of the previous podcasts and the ones pertinent to today's show, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2523. Have an amazing start to your week.